The inspiration of our work uh, on sustainable modernity in Scandinavia comes from the evolutionary thought, especially David Stone Wilson and his colleagues from uh, the Evolutionary Institute. What we found seductive about uh, their approach is their uh, emphasis on the role of cooperation and pro-social uh, behavior in the evolution of human and animal species. We've been all misreading Darwin, they say. Darwin is not about might is right. Uh, his message is that uh, the human evolution and the most successful species succeed not because they're selfish genes, but because of, the, of their skill in collaborating with one another and their uh, caring for one another. One of the most famous examples of uh, collaborative defense is found among the musk oxen. When attacked by wolves, they form a circle with the calves in the middle and the horns facing out. This collaborative behavior allows them to fence off other attackers. And in this way, they survive in a hostile world. Now, what does this mean? At one level, between the oxen, there is collaboration. But at another level, between the oxen and the wolves, there is competition. And the oxen are so much better off because they collaborate. A good analogy in a human society is actually a football game, where a team which consisted only of egos such as Maradonas or Ronaldos would lose abysmally to a team that knows how to play in tandem. In other words, while selfish Ronaldos beat ordinary players in one-to-one -one tacklings, a team of cooperative players will beat a team of selfish prima donnas. So what does this have to do with the Nordic model? Firstly, it stands in contrast to the neoliberal model, exemplifying crude Darwinism, where competition runs all the way through, between individuals, between firms and between societies. In ideal socialism, on the other hand, the ideal is organized collaboration on all levels. Now, it has been argued that the Nordic model is a middle ground between neoliberalism and socialism. As we see it, however, the Nordics combine them, but with full collaboration at one level and sharp competition at another. In this way, they can combine a competitive advantage of collaboration. Let's take the Norwegian petroleum economy. The basis of its success is the development of a highly competitive and technically advanced offshore industry. But the super profits from oil extraction have been collectively appropriated by society and put into the petroleum fund. So here again we have the special combination of collaboration and competition at different levels that characterizes the Nordic model. Now you see the core question in our evolutionary scheme of things is how has it come about that the Nordic countries are such masters of collaboration? And this is where culture comes in. We argue that although the Nordic societies differ economically and politically, they share a common and very strong moral culture which has for ages promoted a pro-social cooperative mindset. The cooperative habits of the heart have been transmitted by folk takes, family values, national literatures, political visions and the models of cultural heroes. It is enough to think of the Norwegian Askeladden, the Swedish Pippi Langstrom and the Finnish Mummy Trolls to see the emphasis on the value of teamwork. Skilled in the art of teamwork, the Nordics can successfully compete internationally while representing some of the world's most open economies. Of course, the Nordic model is not without challenges, such as uh, globalization, digitalized economy, uh, or immigration. There are many clashes and collisions. However, at the end uh, of the 20th century and the beginning of the 21st, the Nordics have managed to create what we call a sustainable modernity and well-being societies.